Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Eric Small. I work at UCSF, where I'm a professor of medicine and work in the prostate cancer program and medical oncology. Um, I'd like to welcome you to our patient conference on prostate cancer, uh, which is co-sponsored by the California Prostate Cancer Coalition and the UCSF Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. We're really excited uh, with this conference. Um, as you'll see, we've done it before. For those of you who are with us at our last meeting, we had the pleasure of doing it in person. Uh, circumstances are a little bit different, and so we're doing this remotely. But I think um, the same principles and the same goals and I think the same strengths will hold. So why this meeting? Well, really the focus of this meeting is you. Uh, it's to empower patients, families, caregivers, and healthcare providers and advocates to use current and cutting edge information to help make informed decisions. Um, and at a very real level, this is about decision-making the whole way through. So we know that uh, men with prostate cancer and their loved ones and their caregivers uh, are often faced with a bewildering array of choices. Um, and the more choices we have, the better. I mean, that's a good thing. Um, but it also makes decision making more complicated. Um, the second thing that's happened over time is that we've all come to realize that outcomes are just better when shared decision making is undertaken, shared between the patient, the provider, the caregiver, and that that decision making is done as an informed way as possible. We also know that in the heat of the moment, um, you know, in the clinic, particularly in very busy uh, clinics that are churning through lots of patients or very, very busy providers, that you may not have the uh, leisure time that you desire or could wish for in helping you make those decisions. And so the intent of this is to get as much information out there in advance um, so that uh, again, to empower you as you move forward in your decision-making process. Um, I mentioned that uh, we had met once before. Here's um, where we've been. In 2019, we had our first annual conference and we called it annual. We planned on doing it annually. Uh, in 2020, well, COVID. And you can see this little snippet of a true sign. I believe this one was in San Antonio, but um, which I thought was so true. Um, and today, um, I think uh, we're getting to see the light at the end of the tunnel as it pertains to COVID. Um, uh, nevertheless, our meeting today is completely virtual. Um, so because by necessity, uh, but we're planning a meeting next year. And next year, we hope to see you in person. Um, we haven't figured out the venue. For those of you who were with us in 2019, I guarantee you it won't be in that really steep hall that we had it in at UCSF. Um, but I think the face-to-face -face part is really, really important. And so uh, we'll, we'll work on doing that and we'll keep people posted. And one other thing I wanna say about COVID uh, is that we have intentionally left discussions of COVID and prostate cancer out of the agenda for the next two days. Um, and the reason for that is one, it's been talked about a lot, but second, we're gonna leave it to our um, uh, meet the faculty sessions where that, those questions can certainly be raised and, and addressed, but we thought that we would sort of uh, focus more on the prostate cancer piece less on the COVID piece. So this conference will provide basic principles of prostate cancer for those of you who um, haven't read a lot about it, it will give you sort of the background. We want to provide updates on state-of-the-art diagnosis and treatment and there have been some really important changes. We'll be talking about, for example, PSMA PET imaging that was uh, in part developed at UCSF uh, by Tom Hope and his colleagues. Um, for sure, as I've alluded to, we want to talk about considerations and personal decision-making. And 
that, you know, we will ask all of our speakers throughout to sort of really be focused on that aspect and, and certainly in the question and answering uh, sessions. And we want this participation for now, it'll be a virtual community of patients, families, healthcare providers, and advocates. We are in this, you know, we work on this together as a team. Uh, and that's the philosophy and, and the spirit of how, how we approach this. Um, you will note, uh, I'll show you in just a second, that in our breakout sessions tomorrow, there's one specifically set up for uh, healthcare providers and families. Um, so, or, so that there is a focus on, on those very important uh, support elements. Here's our basic agenda. Um, today, we will be doing an overview in terms of introduction to prostate cancer. We'll be talking about localized prostate cancer. We have uh, a panel discussion and a number of cases that will illustrate um, <clears throat> uh, the principles. I, I will tell you that most of the presentations are pre-recorded, um, but the panel discussion cases are live, just as this session right now is live. Um, we will end uh, the day with a session on prostate cancer and lifestyle, um, and then uh, adjourn. Um, dinner is on your own. We're not providing you guys with dinner. Um, uh, I know Stan Rosenfeld, uh, our, our amazing patient advocate, is thinking to himself, and of course, everyone is gonna have a very prostate healthy dinner. Um, I'm sure he'll make a comment about that along the way. Um, on Saturday, uh, we'll resume uh, at nine in the morning. Uh, nine o'clock will be the intros and then we'll get going at 9.05. And we'll start talking about recurrent prostate cancer, followed again with a panel discussion in cases and finish off with a session on more advanced prostate cancer. And you will see that the boundary between advanced and recurrent and early stage or localized is getting very, very blurry. And I suspect that next year when we do this, we're not gonna even organize it this way. Um, so it's, I would encourage everyone to be here for both days because it's pertinent, I think, to, to everyone. And then at the end of the day on Saturday, we have these breakout discussions uh, sort of meet the faculty conference. And we'll post this list again um, tomorrow with, and each person will have their own Zoom room, a link will be provided to, and you'll be able to go to any or all of them. You can flip from one to another, um, and you can see that the topics uh, include advanced disease, diet, early stage disease, imaging, uh, symptom management, uh, physical and emotional, with a focus on patients and caregivers patient peer support and personal decision-making, uh, sexual function, drug development, and so forth. So there, there, there's a lot to choose from. Um, we all believe these are probably the most important things, uh, parts of the sessions that we can do. And we know that it won't be quite as satisfying as doing it in person, uh, but it will be very useful to get everyone's feedback uh, on the individual session so that when we do do it in person next year, we'll know which ones to, to double down on. Um, in, in fact, um, if you um, need to miss a session, want to share information with contacts, don't worry, we're recording this and it will be shared online following the event. So this will be available uh, for everyone and to share forward. Um, so, uh, if people who have registered are the people that have access to the real time and the ability to ask questions and so forth. In terms of audience questions, um, you will have uh, throughout the session a Zoom Q&A box. Just enter your written question there. We do have some pre-submitted questions that we've reviewed that for people who wanted to send those in. But as your questions come up during the session, just pop them in. Uh, the chair of the session will uh, select questions or paraphrase questions. Um, please don't use uh, the question session for very specific questions to your case. We'd rather it be general 
that is applicable to the entire audience. Um, <clears throat> but by all means, uh, jot questions down and then you can bring them, uh, any remaining questions uh, to the meet the faculty session uh, the following day. Um, so there'll be plenty of opportunity to do that. Um, the one other request we have of people um, is as you go, as you hear each session uh, and you're jotting down questions, it would be wonderful if you would jot down, because we'll ask you for it at the end, but if you, for each session, if you would just jot down your impressions, you know, this is a, a terrible session, this is a great session, uh, this is what I learned from it, um, and this is how it could be better, or this is what you should keep exactly the same. Just very general brief comments would be super useful, and then we'll collect them after the fact. So thank you for doing that in advance. So with that, um, I mentioned at the outset that this, this uh, program is co-hosted and sponsored by both UCSF and uh, in particular the UCSF Prostate, uh, Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center and the Prostate Cancer Program within it. But equal partners in this and wonderful folks to work with are, are my friends and colleagues uh, from CPCC, the California Prostate Cancer Coalition. So I'd like to welcome Merrill and introduce Merrill Nissenberg, who's the president of the CPCC, who I think uh, wanted to say a few words. So I'd Merrill, like to welcome everyone. Thank you, Eric, very much. Um, on behalf of the California Prostate Cancer Coalition and the steering committee, we are thrilled to be co-sponsoring this event today and tomorrow. The California Prostate Cancer Coalition was formed as a nonprofit in 1997. So we've been helping prostate cancer patients and their families for 24 years, hard to believe. Um, along with your registration links today, you should have received a number of materials, including the agenda, which is in a standalone format, as well as part of the conference brochure. And you will have received the brochure and then a number of materials, links to laminates, to all kinds of durable resources and to the sponsor's materials. Um, the agenda is on pages one and two of the brochure, and the, um, the information that is contained in the brochure also talks about the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center, as well as provides material on CPCC on pages four and 11. Uh, we have an exciting faculty, an outstanding agenda. I'm not really overstating that at all. Um, I do want to thank the steering committee for all of their work, especially Eric and Adina Bailey and Tiffany Razzo. Um, it's, we could not have done it without you. And also thank to our, thanks to our sponsors um, for their support and for the materials that they've provided. And have a great conference. Thanks again. Thanks, Meryl. So um, absolutely a pleasure to work with uh, CPCC. It's a great example of how, um, as a team, we can accomplish more. So with that, welcome. Um, we're really excited uh, with this. You'll notice that the theme of this was the, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, partly it's because obviously we're in Northern California and in, in San Francisco, but, but I love the image of a bridge as linking two things together um, and providing access and communication back and forth. And so I think it's a very fitting metaphor for what this conference is about, which is about communication, uh, shared decision making, um, and working together uh, to, to advance patients' interests. 